What does Amber's breath smell like? Um, Popcorn. Ketchup, onion, eggs. Okay. <laughs> what is happening? Man, I was very excited to do this podcast. That answer just went in so many different directions. <laughs> Is this starting off with the Amber attack? Uh, well, I wanted to attack you Why? before I talk about She has bad that. breath. You smell it? My breath smells pretty good right now. Oh! You smell it? Oh! Because <laughs> you're annoying. You oh! smell wait, wait, it? wait, smell wait, it wait. right now. Can you do us a favor real quick? And for this podcast, maybe just don't talk. Wait, wait. <laughs> smell my breath right now. No. 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 What? That's gross. Amber. That's kind of gross. I, I brush even and mouthwash. Even I if it smells my rice, like the act of doing it is gross. Yeah. Yeah, because imagine coming onto a podcast where other people are listening, and all of a sudden you get accused, and these other people cannot hear or I mean, they smell. Can sm- they can they smell. It. Hear. <laughs> they they can't smell. And now I feel like I have no, no, to defend myself. No, no, you can hear myself. it too. Like, okay, ready? Fresh breath. Amber, go ahead. Ew! Oh you, God! You hear like the grindiness yeah, yeah. in it? You my hear the particles. That's gross. <laughs> Why are you guys talking about my breath? I had no idea that was going to be the intro. Oh, okay. so. I just thought it was a good way to... It was. Know. It was like... It made me think. I was like, oh, popcorn. Also, popcorn by the breath. way... Um, <laughs> yeah, popcorn. Popcorn has a good smell. The butter does. The butter. <laughs> the butter. <laughs> <laughs> but well, what does the popcorn smell like without the butter? I have no idea. No, it you, smells like nothing. So, you know, like, cor- like dry corn? You know those... Uh, what are those beans? Bean boozled? Uh-huh. There's a, Bean pop- boozled, there's like a popcorn the- one. Hmm. There's a popcorn one with butter. Oh, yeah. And it was not. It was on the bad side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it does not taste good. It does not taste Cause good. Because it's in a jelly bean form, guys. You're, <laughs> like salmon tastes delicious, but if it, there's a salmon candy, I'm not sure. Mm. But that's not how it should be. Swedish fish. <laughs> 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 I also, um, I said that your breath smells like ketchup, onion, egg, and that's also one of my favorite sandwiches to eat. Yeah. That's just all that's in the sandwich? Ketchup. Like a breakfast. It's, well, I like to do a shami kebab style. Mm. Yeah. Like the Pakistan style. Okay, so people don't know this, but if you do it with a hot dog bun, it's so much better. Really? Why? So, so it's just like that's the, the way that they make it. You? Well, if you think about it, <laughs> if you hear those three things, egg, onion, ketchup, you're like, uh. You don't want brother, that as a uh, breath, but like no, you don't. Uh, as a yeah. food, it's like nice. As a food, it's good. But but I remind him of the morning time is what I'm hearing. <laughs> it's like he thinks about morning, like morning breath, sunshine, morning sunshine <laughs> fresh morning. air, amber. Mm. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, back to, to Strange, Strange Flavors, Flavors, everybody. The, the strangest, strangest and greatest, greatest podcast. podcast. Onion-filled podcast in the world. The in the wor- game. Planet. My name is Fiery Breath for us. My name is Shami Kebab Shamir. My name is Alu Prata Amber. Amber. Wait, sorry, I, sh- I shouldn't do it for you. It's fine. Alu Something Brata grows, Amber. but she never picks like on theme, so I was like, no, it is on theme. Sorry, I'm, I'm no, not. She picked on I feel theme like I'm last starting time. Out, like really, really aggressive because I yeah. feel like we started. I mean, you've been off attacked. You so came in sense. with like you come. Yeah. In, you came in with not only just you came in hot, but you came in with hot breath. Uh. And I don't appreciate that. <laughs> oh, you could really dude, smell that. Yeah, dude. Like you could, I you could can hear it. I could smell it through my ears. Yeah. <laughs> you know your rose right? is breaking right now. Rose is breaking. <laughs> this is the first 4D podcast. We'll have like. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> scent so, infused. Scent infused. <laughs> aroma infused. Um, thanks everybody for listening. I hope uh, anybody who's fasting their Ramadan is going well. Yeah. Um, we've been going absolutely crazy on the Patreon. So make sure you tune in for that after you're done listening crazy to this. Crazy episodes. We got a crazy episode today. Mm-hmm. I got some questions to ask Amber. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's uh, if you need something to help pass the time when you're fast, like, you know, you got a whole bonus episode, go to Patreon. You can check us out there. Um, we've got Strange Flavors merch. Um, also on the same website, I got the Bond Hub shirt on. Nice. So I also have merch uh, from one of our critics, famous <laughs> critics, <laughs> famous critics. Um, Muhammad. Yeah. Shout out. Goat clothing. Yeah. Not your Habibi. Not your Habibi. So he, he actually gifted this to me specifically. That's not true about Shamir, though. What? You're everybody's Habibi. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he gifted to all of us. No, he, specifically me. That's specifically Shamir. <laughs> no, it's yeah. nice. He gifted it to all from of us. From goat's clothing. I met him for the first time at two weekends ago. Mm-hmm. Shout out Muhammad. 
Shout out Muhammad. Thank and you. And hopefully he comes on the podcast one day. Yeah. yeah. He's listening right now, just writing notes. Yeah, he's writing critiquing. Notes. <laughs> <laughs> he's very quickly become a part of the friend group. Yeah. I told Amber, I was like, oh, this is our critic. She's like, stop saying that. It's not a good word. And then we're like, she was like, say feedback. And we're like, critic's a good word. <laughs> this is our feedback. Yeah. This is our feedbacker. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this is a guy who cr- like critiques us. And I was like, no, no, he gives us feedback. <laughs> no, but we we were saying that like critique is a good word. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. critique is good. Some people are always like, oh, yeah, you're so critical. Do you see Shamir yeah. just dropping week after week critiques of these movies? It makes people want to watch them. I'm yeah. like, dang, yeah. he's dro- he dropped. Shamir is a, uh, what's it called? Letterbox influencer. Influencer, yeah. And are you getting followers? <laughs> no. <laughs> but he's influencing yeah he is influencing. influencing like wait when you post one of your reviews do like a lot of people reply and then give you no. their they don't <laughs> it's like no one replies <laughs> like, why, why? I, don't, I don't know why I imagine that when you post one of your no. reviews then people like give their feedback to no. your <laughs> it's like oh, okay. a, it's like a diary that like no one re- it's like a twitter that no one like well, a live journal because now we're not now no, we're not talk about that. it oh. what? live journal oh you guys talk about it because my brother's like did you see Shamir's review <laughs> and Dang, I'm like, okay. like, yeah, he's like, he's like, yeah, that's what, that's exactly what I thought. Or he's like, oh, we got to check out that movie or whatever. So I'm like, dang, like, I thought maybe other people are like, no, yeah, dude, I wish Chandler I just dropped I, in the I, review. That's the goal. That's why I'm like telling everyone, like, yo, download it. But like, only mm-hmm. few successes so far. Did you download okay. Letterbox? I didn't. Oh, well, well you're I, just, like, you're I'm also like vicariously kind of off of your brother. My, no, I'm not using a burner, but like, he he a tells burner. me what's going on. <laughs> So then I don't have in to in the do letterbox the loop, even yeah. though there's no loop. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's a, no loop. It's like there's a subreddit really for shimmers uh, letterbox reviews. <laughs> That'd be funny. You should just copy and paste them onto Twitter too while you're at it. I do sometimes, but then like sometimes I get no replies. So then it's like, <laughs> is it in the void? Well, if you I'll put do it, it to like, my like Instagram stories and stuff, and like Snapchat stories and stuff, people yeah. reply to that. But I feel like if you use like the language and copied and pasted it mm. and did like hashtag the movie titles name and stuff, yeah. It would probably gain some traction. But I'm not trying to like... Be that. I'm not trying to export it. I'm trying to like import. You know? right. He's trying to build the community right, around right, him. Right, right, right. Not me, but like in Letterboxd. Like I want a good community on Letterboxd. I don't mm. care oh, you for it. Go outside of it. You I don't know care. how to grow your page, right? How? You got to make those lists. That's too much. No, you, you already probably have it. Like movies that I loved in 2024 so far. Or movies that I, the worst movies of all time, make a list. Yeah. You know? My favorite part's like reviewing. Mm. Like I like watching a movie mm-hmm. and then like spilling my thoughts and feelings on it. Yeah. If you're not aware, Letterbox is like this app where you just like review movies only, not TV shows, just movies. And you can like follow people and like find movies to watch from there too. Yeah. I wish I had done this a long time ago where like with my music, I'm good because I made playlists when I was really little. And so I've added to that up until this age. Mm-hmm. So those playlists like have been ever growing. There's new ones. Um, and so that's been good. But with movies, whenever people like whenever I'm trying to think of like a um, a category of movies that I've watched and stuff, like a playlist of them, like how you're saying, mm-hmm. like, you know, movies that make you mm-hmm. dance Cry, feel in something. your underwear or whatever. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. There's only one that I've ever made a playlist of like movies movies wise and it was like movies where nothing happens Mm. where Mm. it's literally a movie where it's just like you kind of see it's just like it's pretty Mm -hmm. it's kind of like casual like a day in the life type or like i would say boyhood Boyhood, i was literally thinking that so it's all movies like boyhood where it's like nothing really happened but at the same time you're just like you're just there you're you're watching you're kind of like spectating someone else's life yeah almost and it's not like anything drastic like movie s that happens not this crazy arc it's just kind of like yeah it happened and you watched it happen yeah speaking but, of movies though i saw the nickelodeon documentary oh that thing is crazy yeah it's crazy quiet on set yeah about like dan schneider and stuff dan schneider and like that's just tip of the iceberg like so much worse happened i don't want to spoil it because i feel like people should watch it yeah but mm. i literally it was like midnight during ramadan and I was just like, let me just watch an episode, finish the whole thing in like one sitting. It's four episodes, but. Can I have a really bad hot take? What? This is not the Drake Bell situation. So not 
Drake Bell. Like I, I'm definitely sympathizing, empathizing with him entirely and his story. Yeah. But when it comes to Dan Schneider's actual like on set behavior, because a huge part of the documentary was talking about how problematic he was, problematic he was on set, right? And I ended up watching his. Uh, YouTube response video. You don't watch the documentary? I watched the documentary. Oh, okay. And yeah. then I watched his response yeah. video. And uh, again, like I'm not talking about like female contact, uh, conduct or all those things. I'm talking about specifically a huge part of the documentary was his onset like aggression, if you will. Yeah. And like, um, you know, sometimes maybe not being the nicest in the writer's room and things like that. And like, to be fair, like that is so prevalent in like a lot of workspaces. Like there is a lot of toxic masculinity in workspaces and there is, a, you do occasionally have a boss who's a complete a-hole and he is like, you know, like doesn't treat you with the greatest thing. So like, like they spent a, like a huge chunk of this documentary was his onset behavior. And I was watching that kind of being like, okay, yeah. Like this doesn't, and, and that might be a problem towards like general work environments in general. That might be the bigger problem there. Yeah. But I didn't think that Dan Schneider's on set behavior based off of what they said in the documentary was all that different from like the regular corporate yeah. experience as a woman in corporate America. Yeah. I think the only difference is like, yeah, I agree with you in terms of like the adults, but when it comes to the kids, mm -hmm. I think that's when it's a different line. Yeah, for sure. Cause like, you know, this probably happens in mm -hmm. every movie set, right? Mm -hmm. Like this girl do something weird, you know, like Quentin Tarantino. He always has mm -hmm. like a girl showing her foot or whatnot. But the fact that it's Margot Robbie or whatever, it's like, OK, it's normal. But if you have a kid do that, mm -hmm. like Miranda Cosgrove or Jenna McCurdy and they're like 14. Didn't like, Megan Fox say that she experienced that on. Uh, yeah. With Transformers. What's the director's name? Uh, Michael, Michael Bay. Bay. Michael Bay. And uh, it was like she was like really the. She was underage. She, yeah, I think she was like 16, She's 16, 17. but she like lied about being 18 or something. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah, it just happens. Yeah, you're right. With kids, it's definitely different. Yeah. Like what, yeah. what you're saying, Amber, is kind of like, okay, after this allegations come out and stuff, then hindsight is 2020. Then people start kind of picking apart every little thing. And it's like, is this really part of it? But yeah, I feel like they should have spent more time focusing on what like was actually shocking in the matter. Like there was parts where I was like, this is you're making this part of him seem so villainized, but I don't think this part is that big of a deal. And it was yeah. kind of a bittersweet thing for me because I love Zoe 101. I loved like the like Sam and Cat, the iCarly, all of that. Drake you and know? Josh. Like Drake and Josh, all of it. Like I loved it. And like, you know, to hear that there were certain people on set that didn't like Jeanette McCurdy. Like my heart goes out to her. Cause I, I can tell genuinely that she wasn't treated well, but it was not a specific sole influence. Maybe she had mom. It was her mom too. Like yeah. maybe she had a stronger mom in that matter. Like, you know, that would be a different experience for her. Somebody who's advocating for her. Yeah. And so I think the bigger problem there was having child stars who did not have strong advocates for them because yeah. all the ones who did seemed like, they were well protected. And if not, it was a scenario where they were manipulated out of it in a Drake Bell situation. That's tough. I mean, I don't like, I don't even know. People are like, oh, you got to like look at the parents, whatever. But it's like, no, nah, sometimes the, the time, parents are like 90, 95% there. Sometimes mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. They're just watching for their child and like producers. You, you really just can't like trust people. You really have to protect the kids. So, mm -hmm. like, when you hear, because I had heard like rumors of this stuff before, right? Oh, Dan Schneider. It's been happening for years. For mm -hmm. feed. And then yeah. like somebody was saying, I think my brother was telling me, oh, the Nickelodeon like logo was the foot also. Yeah. He's like these conspiracy, whatever. But uh, when you hear it, like especially from a show that you used to watch, like Drake and Josh. And then when you hear about it happening to Drake, I saw his music video recently where like he walked onto the set of Drake really and Josh good. too. Yeah. And it just feels surreal. It's yeah. like. Bro, that is the set that like we watched you on all the time, and yeah. that really happened to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the one that like when I heard about Amanda Bynes too, that one oh, hurt yeah. my feelings, bro. Amanda yeah. Bynes, yeah. They didn't talk That's much so about sad. what happened to her, but there's yeah. rumors going that Dan Schneider impregnated her. Yeah, and they had to. It sucks because like I, like I wish Amanda Bynes didn't experience what she did because she was so like she on could... top of everything. Right. She was like the Amanda show, like we oh used my, to watch yeah. that all the time. And then she's the man, one of my favorite movies. Yeah. yeah. And then even like to come to find out she hated working. She on hated that? it, yeah. Yeah. She was also like she came back on Easy A 
And that was like, we mm-hmm. haven't seen her in a while in that role or like a movie role like that. Mm-hmm. And then like, we haven't seen her like since kind of. And I wish she was in her right mind to be able to like speak for herself because genuinely her tweets are not like, like when you, so I watched like a three hour deep dive, um, <laughs> I was like cooking and stuff uh, like about Amanda Vine's entire history. And she has like a history of after she like, um, had that episode where she lied a lot. Mm. And she would go on Twitter and like say a lot of lies. And this was very non-biased documentary. The girl like actually was an Amanda fan. And it's like, it's hard because it's like, I want to, if, if that happened to you, that is so sad and you should be held accountable. Yeah. But like, we have no way of knowing because of the fact that, uh, well, one, she didn't say it was Dan. She said it was a boss and I'm sure she had like a lot of bosses and stuff around her, but I wish that whatever happened to her didn't so that she could have, um the ability to have a voice for herself apparently her biggest downfall actually was an adderall addiction due to the fact that she became obsessed with being skinny and Mm. uh, adderall suppresses your appetite and so she basically fried her brain well regardless it's like all of this kind of was triggered by by something body image yeah Yeah. because when you see her as a kid she's so iconic she's so like you know confident and just she was really running that show like yeah. I mean like a lot of those shows when you saw them as a kid it was you didn't really see a girl in the well I guess some of the Disney and Nickelodeon shows you did but I don't know with Amanda it was just kind of like it was around she her. was the best part about the show like mm-hmm. like Hannah Montana right it's it's Miley Cyrus but she's playing a character mm-hmm. so it's like around her character even though it's like maybe loosely about her or whatnot mm-hmm. but Amanda Bynes it's like you do everything like mm-hmm. it is yeah. about you um, but and she was so good at it. Like you, really just, good, you yeah. believed everything. You were just like, wow, like Amanda is really cool. Yeah. But another thing about the weight thing, it's like it relates in sort of like minor spoiler. But like there was an actress, you know, a little girl actress that was supposed to be Amanda Bynes before Amanda Bynes. OK. And she was like the main star or whatnot of like all that. And then she was getting she was like gaining weight and she like gained she got through puberty and whatnot. And so then they're like, hey, you're gaining weight. And then like they kind of like shelved her. Like a little bit. And that's when they found Amanda Bynes. Mm -hmm. And then she became the main star. They said that. So she got like sick for like a week. She had like mono or something. She got sick for like a week and a half. And she lost like 10 pounds. And her mom said to her, she's like, oh, this is like the best you've ever looked. Mm -hmm. Simply because she was skinnier than normal and like became addicted to being that. And then having the rivalry with like Lindsay Lohan and like Lindsay Lohan was like the sexier version of her, like playing these sexier roles. And Amanda was like, why am I being silly with wigs on all that? And the Amanda show. And then like, she's a man. Why am I playing a man? Like, I want to play like a sexy role. And like, that's what kind of launched her into Easy A and stuff. And as soon as she finally started gaining traction in those roles, she just became a victim to her drug habits. That's So So many of those kids that we grew up like watching like turned out, you know, in unfortunately, like kind of bad situations. Some of them are, you know, um, thankfully good. But I saw something that was like all these kids, they gave us our childhood and lost theirs. And that like, yeah, that that makes you so sad. Yeah. That that was like one of the biggest aspects. It like changes how you remember these shows. Mm -hmm. But two, also, it also makes me sad in a way like to make such good because Con- Dan Schneider made like great content. Like, yeah, yeah he made like great that's shows. like undeniable. And that's what's crazy is he's so good at what he does. Yeah, mm-hmm. and what makes me sad is like maybe you have to be, you know, some sort of crazy to like yeah. produce that amount and go through that. The problem more. isn't that he was able to like create those shows and like be on the set. The problem is that Nickelodeon should have been providing yeah. a lot more structure to the set where they're protecting the children where dan schneider should not be running the show with the kids yeah yeah like he should be running the show as the show nickelodeon the kids should have been protected nickelodeon loved dan schneider so much that they were like do whatever yeah, yeah and that was making the them so much money all these hit shows yeah. like mm-hmm. they're not gonna stop that train yeah by mm-hmm. any means but they'll you get, cover up the whatever. results you get is what happened with those kids yeah. and stuff so it's like i feel like he could have been a successful like director for these shows but and not run into these allegations had there been a stronger presence of Nickelodeon on set yeah. doing what they should have to pr- protect the, th- the children and like having the right like barriers in yeah. place. In comparison, I think Disney is much better with that. Mm. But I think they might also have these level of allegations, but they're good at cutting them off, hiding them and mm. not getting to the public. Because anytime someone says something, a racist tweet or someone digs up a racist tweet, 
they're fired. Mm. Really? Literally. That happened to like big directors on yeah. Disney. It happened mm. to. But they did hire that sex offender. Yeah. But that was, uh, I found out it was only for like what? Three episodes and it was like way back mm. behind. And then after they found out, they cut him off. And uh, so, yeah. Yeah. It's wild out here. And that's why I'm like, I feel like there's, um, it's happening now a lot more, but like on social media with this whole like mommy vlogger, um, like family vlogging situations where these families are like explaining the children, not protecting them and things like that, which mm. I feel like is almost worse when it's your own parents yeah. doing it. We had like that. What is her name? Jody, who recently got, um, arrested for punishing her children, like chaining them up and not feeding them. And like they found her journal journals recently and she's literally word for word writing like the, I'm not going to feed them because I feel like there's a devil inside of them and they're like, I need to teach them the right way and whatever. And she basically like told on herself. But then there's also these more like hidden ways where there's like Ren on TikTok. Have you heard about this? Mm -hmm. There's this mom on TikTok who's they're a group of like Ren and something. It's like W-R-E-N. And the mom is basically setting her up to be in situations where predators would find a lot of enjoyment out of her videos. And it's like a child that's like two or three and she'll do things like, um, give her a popsicle and she'll like choke on the popsicle. What the heck? Or like, it'll be like, um, she's eating frozen honey, but it's like a weird look or like, um, making her, her like say certain things. And it's supposed to look really like innocent, However, she's she covering it she's up. She's doing this on purpose? There's just too many examples of this type of behavior, like, popping up on her page and it being a hot spot for child predators to end up on, for it to not be obvious. Like, if you can tell that this type of content is attracting these predators, would you not then stop and not put your child in situations and put, like videos out there that are more suggestive but it obviously draws an attention for her she makes money off the content so bro people need to calm down yeah if you're listening right now literally calm down calm, calm down, down. <laughs> what are you doing yeah it's gross i'm actually um i'm coming out with a documentary oh god yeah there's i'm concerned about what? um it's called quiet on podcast <sighs> dang what happened i was uh um, assaulted my family was attacked by someone sitting on the same couch as me right now. An absolute attack on my entire family. Really? That's really. crazy. On really. the couch is only me, and I'm looking at our podcast topics, and it says Amber attack. So what is about to happen here? You came in Dang. hot with the question, and I have no idea where this is leading. How do you I feel? It'd it be your own people, bro. It'd be your own people. <laughs> How do you feel? <sighs> Well, I, I would I would like the uh you know when it's like a silhouette, yeah, the dark yeah. face in the documentary with the deep voice. Hold on, let me close the curtain a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So could could I get the deep voice too? Wait, wait, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So what happened was just a few days ago, my family and I we were looking for cakes. We were looking for cakes to give to somebody. Okay. Can you hear me? I can turn, that, turn that off. You get the point. Okay. You get the point. You were looking for cakes. You were looking for cakes. Uh huh. To give to somebody. Yeah. And I had remembered, you know, like uh, one time for my birthday, Amber got me a really delicious cake. Yeah. It's like, why don't we get a cake from there? Yeah. We'll gift it to this family. A tiramisu cake. It was a tiramisu cake. And. My mom was like, yeah, that's a good idea. That cake was delicious. Mm -hmm. Everybody ate it up. They loved it. It was like, it's one of the best cakes that we've ever had. Whole family. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> so we're so we're looking at the cake. And then, uh, you know, we're, we're getting ready to order it. And right there, there it is. Ingredients. Pork and rum. <laughs> In the tiramisu cake? <laughs> pork and rum? Yo. You poisoned my family with pork and rum? 
Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, yeah. how's there pork in their freaking in tiramisu? In their tiramisu, it's literally coffee There's and pork. Your I, I think you guys, you looked at like the bacon toppings you or something like that. You looked at like, like the now. wrong ingredients. You, you know, like those donuts that have like bacon on it? Do not, I think you went do to not, that. Do not gaslight me <laughs> after we've already been poisoned. <laughs> how's there? Listen, There's, like, rum, listen. rum, it makes sense, maybe. Listen, let me tell you. Let the me tell pork, you. how's it? I'll make it. I'll oh, make did it you look at the wrong cake? Did you get like a different cake? Search it up right now. This is victim blaming. Literally, this is victim blaming. No, this is called research, she's buddy. Dan, she's Dan Schneider right now. Okay, listen to me. This is this is this is why there's pork in it. It's a Korean bakery. Mm-hmm. You call Koreans pork enthusiasts? Wow. Koreans are pork enthusiasts. Right? Are. My brother, <laughs> right? I was like, I was like, why would there be pork enthusiasts? My brother, he was recently in Korea. He was telling me about this. He said there's pork in everything, including the coffee. Wait, what? Yes. <laughs> what? He, said, he said I was trying to get a, co- uh, a coffee, and some guy came up to me and said there's pork in it because he knew that I was Muslim. Mm-hmm. My brother said he he ba- basically ate, like, candy while he was there until he found, like, another Muslim guy who he, uh, you know, started traveling with, and he told him the spots that there's not pork in Well, there's food. a lot of pork in the candy here, too. Mm-hmm. Gelatin. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's, like, they're, they're putting pork in, the you know, like. The coffee is crazy. A slice of bread. Pork bro. latte. I'm it's just like, all these. Can I have an apple? There's pork in this. Pork latte. <laughs> I don't see any of the cakes have pork in it yet. Amber, the tiramisu has pork in it, bruh. Pork and rum, bruh. You you poisoned my family with pork okay, and rum. Hold on, hold on. And it was it's it was delicious. Delicious. Let me let me ask. Bruh. I was gonna say like like you liked it, right? Okay, so this is so as <laughs> soon as for a lot. as soon as my mom finds out, right? Yeah. This is what she likes to do. Wait, how would you, how'd you her, find out? Because we were ordering the cake, and then yeah. uh, it says the ingredients right there, and it's my brother. He ru- he usually like ruins things, right? Like <laughs> I'm eating Starburst. He's like, oh, there's gelatin in that. That's good though. What's good? Yeah, but like, like that he tells me. Yeah, yeah, but but like you're you're innocent until you yeah, find yeah, out. Until once you like, know, don't tell me, bro. Have, like, exactly. let me enjoy it. Yeah, like yeah. Doritos. Oh, they have pork enzymes. Like, tell me after I finish it, bro. What's a and pork then... enzyme? <laughs> pork enzyme. <laughs> I don't. Have you ever held an enzyme in your hand? Yeah. What does it look like? It's just uh, you know the compounds right there. The compounds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't talk to me about compounds and enzymes, right? Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, um, yeah, he pointed it out in the ingredients. I saw it, and this is what my mom does. If we're at a restaurant, uh, does she have for like example, the spoon in her hand and it's like half in her mouth and she just drops it? Well, if she ever eats something that she like finds out that it had like some pork or whatever, she'll make herself throw up. <laughs> she likes. She didn't it. make herself throw up from like years ago. Yeah, exactly. Or but like she no no. This Amber's is what she did. digging right now. She goes. Um, yeah. <laughs> she goes. Look at the tiramisu a- pork and rum. Why don't you just search pork and rum cakes and that's the one that'll show up? Okay. Um, <laughs> so dramatic. And I'm dramatic. You put pork you and rum us. inside of me and my family. And me wow. too. I had it. There's the same yeah, tiramisu you for too. your birthday. Right? I fed you with a spoon. Oh my god. Literally, all it says is it's a layered espresso infused mascarpone cake with pork and rum. Masker pork cake. What is masker porn? Masker porn is cheese. <laughs> masker porn. <laughs> They're putting porn in the porn. cake. <laughs> right, you put porn in my cake. Yeah, I'm not saying anything. You put about Bang Bros that. in my cake, bro. <laughs> Keep going. Put a little casting couch in my Yo, in my cake. Not in the up, not Amber. in the cake. Not in the cake. Leave it on the private browser, not in the cake. Yeah, bro. I just looked up. The, none of their coffee says anything about pork. This either. is what they do. She was just saying, oh, Dan Schneider, you know, I work with people like those. Blah, blah, blah. She let Dan Schneider get away. She'll let pork and rum get away. Yeah, yeah. This is what gaslighting comes down to. Wait, wait. So, so you went to the same exact, like, what is it, bakery? Yes. Are you sure you went to the same one? Patisserie Poupon, whatever it's called. Patisserie Poupon. It was called Tours de Jour. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. What? That was <laughs> not. <laughs> what? That's, whatever you, what, no. whatever no. you said, he went to the wrong place. No. <laughs> no. Why are you being accusing me when you no. went to the wrong place? No, that's the second place we went to. Poupon. We had to end up getting <laughs> close to it. Like, that does not sound like Tours de Jour. We had to end up going to Patisserie Poupon. <laughs> Because we couldn't go to t- Tours du Jour or whatever. Oh, my God. But it was Tours du Jour because it's a Korean bakery. There's I a lot it. of Korean bakeries everywhere. Amber, that one is strictly Korean. Okay. So, so uh, <laughs> if we go, go to the right place. We go to a restaurant, right? Like, my mom, she's like, okay, let me order something safe, like a pasta, right? And then um, when she orders, she's, like, having some. And then later on, like, we find out, oh, it was cooked in wine or something. What she likes to do, she's like, she'll act dizzy. And she'll be like... <laughs> Oh my god, like I'm drunk. <laughs> right? So when we were talking about it, when I was like, Mom, this this cake that you said that was delicious that you could not stop eating, it had pork and rum in it. What are you gonna do about it? And she's like, 
it did? She's like, I knew I got sleepy that day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mom, um, that's not pork is not making you sleepy. Oh my God. And she was like, she was like, Does Amber know this? And I was like, Amber knows. She knows very well this is what she does. <laughs> she poisoned our family. I'm sorry. Like, you don't let her in our house again. It's okay. I've moved on from that uh, bakery now anyway. You should have asked me what was new. If anybody is going to Wait, tour du jour's. It's not new, but I just feel like I'm it's, on the bunt cake it's vibe better now. Than the oh, termos. bunt cake! Bunt I'm on yeah, the bunt cake bunt vibe cake is now. A good, is a good go-to. Yeah, that's my new. She might, might have, have pork in it. No, she's probably <laughs> calling them right now. She's like, "Yo, can you put the pork and rum back yeah. in?" <laughs> Make sure it's for the family if they ever order. <laughs> like the two worst things you could put in a pork cake. and rum. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you had me on. You're welcome. And now I know what it tastes like. You're welcome. I was just hoping you'd be exposed to things in case you ever came across them in real life. Your body would have been like, uh, it was kind of like the shot, like the COVID shot, like the vaccine. Or an allergy shot. An allergy shot. I needed to make sure that your guys' immune systems were, you know, aware that these exist. Oh, I know. okay. I see what you're doing. You know when um, they, they inject a little bit of like the horse blood in you when uh, you get, when you get venom inside of you right when you get bit by a snake mm -hmm. where does venom come from it comes from horse blood because they slowly inject um snake venom into the horse in microdoses so that the blood gets like immune to it and then that's what they inject into you to fight off the venom so you're injecting a little bit of pork into us yeah. so that we uh are immune and rejected yeah i just don't think you have to go in that route i well, think that's what it made me think I, of but we, but we gave really good examples of like the covid vaccine i watched this guy allergen shots. i watched this guy on youtube who inject who gets stung by the most like venomous uh insects and animals in the world and then uh sometimes he has to like quickly get that uh that yeah imagine, that's just the least relatable version um, of all of these imagine he's like at the end like he's done every animal like every poisonous yeah. animal in the world and then he sees the tiramisu <laughs> and he's like i can't he's like right here we have a wild tiramisu pork and, pork and rum bro sometimes his cameraman gets stung by the things <laughs> and he gets so pissed he's like bro why do i sign up for this really it's oh so funny God. oh he's not even it's not like a professional set it's like a YouTuber, It's right? a YouTuber, but I mean, he makes oh, like no. a lot of money. He gets tons of views. Mm. Yeah. It's an awesome show. It's like well, Crocodile Hunter back in the day. I apologize to Auntie, but I don't apologize to you. Damn. Because I don't like how you went about this. Like you knew, like you started being like Amber, Neil. Here she goes. Always victim blaming. I'm not victim blaming. I'm just saying that you should take responsibility for your Quiet on action. podcast. Quiet on podcast. <laughs> Um, I didn't only get attacked by you. Okay. Um, but what are you gonna In say? Ramadan? Me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. The shimmer doc hasn't come out yet. Okay, okay, yeah. I'll reveal all of that in like you're gathering uh, 15 evidence. Years? 15 years? You're gathering evidence and footage. It's okay because the Faraz doc is going to go crazy. Yo. The, uh, in already, comparison? I'm actually making the Faraz doc myself. <laughs> in comparison? <laughs> It's like we we make like a quiet on set doc of Frost. He already has like one of himself, like how good he is. I'm like, like no, no, ready you guys to release it. I'm like, yo, this one sucks. Let me drop the real banger. It's like Shamir's like he had me in like a tank top and under freezing weather for <laughs> nine hours. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see. I no, see no. the direction it's going now. I, I wouldn't use myself. I use Dower. Oh, uh, oh Dower. My, Dower's yeah. would go crazy. Right. He, he's, dropping, so he's dropping documentaries left and right every time he talks about one of these experiences of these videos. Yeah. It's like he made me drown in sugar water yeah. with red 49. He waterboarded me. <laughs> Bro, if people, if there was actually a BTS of like one of those shoots, I would look bad. I feel like I would look bad. We make you look especially, bad. Especially in the edit. I mean, there is in the vlog footage, but like yeah, but the vlog footage is there. It's true. Yeah. But I think I think the trauma bonding between uh, the cast members <laughs> makes it all better, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like we, if we were not all in the dynamic that we are, where we like understand each other's personalities, I think that bro, it at would least go I'm not pulling Dan Schneider's, bro. That's because we I mean, don't you got Dower that. naked. He's like underage. No. <laughs> <laughs> and related. And related. No, he wanted to be naked. I protected him. I said, no, put on. Put on a pair you of actually boxes. had Shamir take his shirt off and wear these little hoochie daddy shorts. Oh, and he made like cum shot. In a kid pool. Bro, in chill. A pool. Bro, chill. In a room? Yeah, he was like drone shot in a kid no, pool cum this shot. This sounds wild out of context, bro. That's not what happened. Yo, maybe that's what Dan Schneider's going through. That's maybe it was not cum shot. 
you know? Maybe first like, of all, first of all, that's not what I want to clear the air right now. <laughs> that's not what happened. We had discussed prior. We want to put Shimmer and his beautiful body in a in a pool of roses. Uh-huh. We didn't have. OK, I wanted to rent an Airbnb. In a kid's pool. I wanted to rent an Airbnb that had a nice pool. I shared yeah, the Airbnb. Yeah, yeah, you did. But then all we could resort to was the nude Dan Schneider herself. Hey, guys, I have a kid's pool. That's true. Who really did it? No, you she, said, you took your, hold on, hold you on. You took your niece's Let's, pool. Let, no, no, hold on. Farah said, I wonder if we could, like, ha, like, we don't have, like, a pool. I was like, nah. I was like, I only have, like, a kid's pool. You're like, that would be funny. Whoa. So he, I brought it up as, like, a psh, <laughs> and he was like, yes, that one right now. But you could be emo- emotionally manipulating him. Yeah. How? Maybe because like, because I'm like oh the vision and, and then, then you're you, like kids pool and then you're like oh I'm gonna make him look like so what about the cum dirt. shot that there's that that, that, <laughs> that doesn't make sense what are you doing what are you saying I, I right have now? nothing to do with the directing <laughs> that's not what okay and the and the above head shot <laughs> what what is that <laughs> the drone shot you're, you're doing too much I'm just saying. It was an innocent shot. Tread lightly, Frost. We got a lot of ammo on you, bucko. We, talk, we have to say that for the documentary. I'm just saying. We you want to talk true, about but, quiet yeah. on set? We could really talk about quiet on set. I think we should be quiet on set now. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't feel good when it's with you, huh? No, you guys are you guys are painting a bad picture. We're not painting no, a bad picture. Drop, I will drop a real doc, mm-hmm. and it will be far worse. Okay, so that is actually going to be a part of the documentary because that's yeah. blackmailing and threatening. We're going to put it, your documentary be, inside our it'll documentary. Be, it'll, be, uh, <laughs> it'll be what I did, right? It, and it'll be like a C grade, like, oh, yeah, that's fine. And then the commentary will be director's cut of like what I was actually thinking mm-hmm. when that was happening, and it'll be far worse. Mm. All right? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm glad that you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you're aware. All right, no perv stuff, though. Yeah. Um. No, I got, I got, I've been Actually, getting it. Somebody t- told me <laughs> at my iftar, you sat on your brother's lap. That's true. And then he Against said. Against his will? And then he said, no. whoa, I'm bricked up right now. No, that's what <laughs> Dower said that. <laughs> <laughs> and these are siblings. If you don't have a gay relationship with your bro or slash bros, you're not really, you're not even bros. I don't think it's supposed to be your real bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's. That's like bro bros. Mm. Bro bros. I, w- my brother and I, we were taking baths together. This is not Showering together up until. At age 25. Yeah, <laughs> 25. 26. 26. <laughs> no, the day, the day we got separated, uh, we were making fun of each other's wieners. And my dad was like, we're not going to have this. <laughs> he saved mm. you guys. Yeah. We were, uh, and then, and then we shared like bunk beds for a really long time. Mm. Like, bruh. Oh yeah. Sitting on sitting on my brother's lap. Yeah. Come on. It's okay. We'll make butt chin. If you haven't, if you're not aware, go watch butt chin. We'll make butt chin itself like an entire episode. That, also, that also that'll be my dark screen dark change voice episode. Okay. <laughs> that that wasn't even bad. I know. But but I looked ugly. But also I, we <laughs> we do that to make other people uncomfortable because other mm-hmm. people are very like, oh my god, bro, like. They get really uncomfortable. So it's funny when you do it like that. Yes. Um, I was trying to get at that. I also got um, attacked in several angles. Okay. At a place that is supposed to be meant for peace. The masjid. The masjid. Oh, man. The masjid, bro. You go, you go to... Th- we, we go yeah, why to is something always prayers. happening at your masjid, bro? Why did I think he was going to talk about the gym? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, at the gym? <laughs> we go to these... Uh, we go to Taravi, which is these nightly prayers, right? It's a very peaceful time. You listen to the Quran being recited. It's nice. It's calm. We just got this new mosque built. You know, it's nice, right? Um, in one night, three different things happen where I'm just like, bro, you just absolutely disturb my peace, hmm. right? This is what happened. First, I'm going down in such that, right? Like going down, mm-hmm. uh, head on the floor. I'm I'm uh, getting up in front of me. I'd heard about this phenomenon before, but I'd never seen it myself. This uncle in front of me was absolutely packing, son. This He had the nicest pr- nut print. In the back of his shavar kameez, <laughs> wait, wait, have you, I've have ever you, seen. Have you ever seen a nut print before, like in the masjid? Not to this level, bro. This like, was like a cow. Because this you, is like cow udders. Because I've never seen this in my life, and 
you you guys remember Salman who came on the podcast? Yes. He would always talk about like, have you guys ever seen like the ball, ball sack print? print? Yeah. I was like, no, I've never heard that. I was like, maybe that's your masjid. Yeah. And like everyone else were like, no, we've never seen that before. So this is interesting. Wait, you're saying that from the back? From the back. <laughs> Wait, wait, are you looking up? No, it just Dude, I don't think you're praying right, bro. I was I was getting up right you're and then not it's kind of just spiritual like mode. Dang, it just dangled in front of me real <laughs> quick. Dangled bro. like keys. Yeah. Through the shawar <laughs> and through the kameez. Yeah, it was like, you know how uh when they stand up, like the whole thing will go between their crack. You seen this? <laughs> sure. The whole throw over the whole shawar kameez, it'll go between their crack if they get up like without kind of like adjusting, right? Mm -hmm. So then this whole package is just in front of me, right? Amazon delivery. And I'm like, bro, that just caught me off guard. So then when I go down, I was just kind of like, I, I wasn't paying attention much. I get up, I land under uh, the uncle next to him in his thobe. My head <laughs> <laughs> goes inside underneath this oh. thobe. And bro, his uh, leg hair like like went up against my face. I was just like about to cry. Real Are you like wrestling? Like what is going on? He was I don't playing know the what nutcracker. happened. I was, just, like, I was just caught off guard, and then I just went into this like I was just blacked out. And but luckily, this uncle, like his leg hair, like it smelled like ooh, bro. It was nice. Okay, it was a good experience. I came out of it, and then like afterwards, you know, like they'll turn around, like oh, who was that? Whatever. He turned around. I was like, I, Uncle, I just landed on your thobe. And he was like, that was you. And he high-fived me. <laughs> so wait, the thobe is long. So your head was stuck in his thobe? Yeah, so he, he like went inside and yeah. inserted himself. My, like as I'm getting up, my head is underneath. And I'm like, oh, dang. I'm not like, Did you have I have your to, eyes like, open? Back up. Well, I felt like the back of the thobe, like uh -huh. on the back of my head. And I was like, I had to quickly like lift it up and get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it was wild. Do you not have enough like forward space? Yeah. Well, sometimes when they're getting up, the nut print uncle, he was thick. So he's like, oh. he he gets up and it's just like, boom, boom. He has to like back up three steps, then forward three steps. So then you have to kind of like watch out for him. Yeah. And then as you're watching out for him, you kind of end up in a zone that's like not You're yours. lucky you didn't like headbutt into his body. Yeah, the nut sack. Yeah. If you I would have a bag, bro. <laughs> 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 like tea bag straight up on the first record. Okay. After that, right? After this happens, I was like, okay, like that was wild. Let me get back. Like, let me try to focus. concentrate again. Let me focus. Okay. So everyone, you know, during Tharabi, they're trying to hydrate at the same time also. So everyone has their water bottles, right? So um <laughs> what's going on? So people are trying to hydrate, so they keep their water bottles with mm -hmm. them. And people, they, you should put your water bottle right in front of you so that, like, you can go over and, like, it doesn't get in anybody else's way, right? Somebody had put their water bottle, um, like, we're all the way at the front, right, where the head goes. And so I'm in front of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Did you sit? On I the sat <laughs> right on, and it wasn't like if it was the it was if it was like the shorter ones, it would have moved out of the way. Or like my Brought my the two ankles, liter bottle, bro. It was like one of the Deer Park like normal sixteen ounce water bottles, whatever. And I just I sat it on it, and then I just bounced right back up. <laughs> Dude, that was not a great feeling, bro. I'm crying. I You're being from, violated in every direction. Yeah, I went from prostration to prostate. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Enough. It was bad. And then the final blow, literally the final blow. There's more. This is all in one night. This mm -hmm. happens. That's crazy. All in one night. I'm like, okay. Let me get back in the, let me zone in. Let me get zoned in. I need to dial in for God right now. There's yeah. too much going on. This, this uncle behind me, right? He is constantly just belching throughout the Ravi. And it's, it's not like a quick, like, it's like a, no. And then he has the audacity to blow cannons absolute air, cannons just air cannons air cannons to the line in front of him Wait, just he's sniping burping and dudes <laughs> he goes to, he goes <laughs> and you hear it every time at least three or four per ricot. and people are like people are like you can see them like squinting and stuff dude next to me and me we both have hoodies 
He puts he puts his hoodie up and tightens it. <gasps> He's like not having it. Between or got some people like literally people are fighting to go up a row. They don't want to be anywhere near this guy. Dang. My brother and I were like, we gotta stay away from this guy. There was in the past we had this guy. He was he was called the uh, what do we call him? Oh, the silencer. He used to dr- he used to just be gassed up, right? He was just releasing these silent ones throughout. Like and it would farting? just be build, farting. And he, it would just be building <laughs> up. <laughs> Bro was breaking like, his fast or not breaking his prayer. prayer. The whole time. And this was like a while ago, right? It was just like everyone in the mosque, oh, it's the silencer, the silencer. Like, then don't get near him. You guys knew who it was? Yeah, we knew who it was because oh it was God. always the same. Like, he was like an older uncle. Tell I don't know if he knew. Tell him the tape at Tom's. I don't know if he knew what he was doing. Uh, but then everyone's like, yo, stay away from the silencer. And then um, if if you ever had to like, you know, break your wudu, mm-hmm. if you ever had to pass one, you, everyone just blame it on the silencer. Oh, my God. And now we've got this guy here. The, just, the opposite end. Just absolutely disturbing our peace. Yeah, I, there's like a certain, um, I don't know what it is, but archetype that has zero awareness of their bodily function sounds. Because like you can burp, right? You could be like, yeah, you know, internal. The internal situation. burp. Like it's, yeah. a, it's like a, it's like an internal like explosive. A, yeah. yeah. And, but then like the ones that are like, that they like get back up and they're like, I'm yeah. like, do you have no shame? Do undies be doing that? Like the aunties be doing that, and it be smelling like straight darka, like straight up like doll. And I'm like, yo, like that. Like I came here, like I'm, I'm, I'm zoning in, and I'm not supposed to be like judging. I'm judging right now, and I don't like it. Dang. So I mean, I, I love. Uh, I don't know if you guys have favorite spots to pray, but I, like my favorite spot is to pray next to a wall, where uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm limiting. That you can post up right afterwards. No, like, like I'm limiting how many people are around me. Oh. So I only have one side to possibly be, like, in an uncomfortable situation. Mm. You know? Yeah. The uncles have no manners. We told my dad he needs to talk to this guy because he was like, oh, I met a new friend. Like, <laughs> he's from Lahore. Blah, blah, blah. And it ended up being this guy. We were like, listen, you need to tell him to leave the Lahari fish behind, whatever he's eating. It's not working out. You got to talk to him. And then now he's like, we talked to my, uh, my, my brother and I were like, so did you talk to him? Cause he's still doing it. And he's like, oh no, he's not actually my friend. <laughs> <laughs> like, Yo, you're not friends with him just because well, he's how burping. How do you bring that up? Like, hey man, uh, I don't know, honestly, <laughs> I I, like, like, you, stop, like, put you, the fry, like ask him what he's eating for iftar. He's eating a lot of fried food. Clearly the best, the best way to combat this is to be him. You have mm. to be him. Mm. Blow a side one. <laughs> yep. Like on the side, reverse. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A reverse is crazy. A reversal, like, because he has to look at you. Like, he has to know it's you, right? Mm. He has to understand that, yeah. like, oh, yeah. So is like, that what I'm doing? Maybe when you silence, mm-hmm. right? You pull out a silencer. Yeah. You need to have your shalwar means just go, like, you see the gas, like, kind of lift up yeah. your shalwar. It just, like, blows, like, yeah. it's in the wind. If it was, like, somebody that was younger, you could probably come up with the joke and be like, be like, man, like I could hear you from over there. Like, yeah, yeah. what'd you have for if that, like something like that? And then be like, yeah, like, and then like kind of make him feel uncomfortable. The about thing it is, my joke. dad is the type to say something like that directly. Mm-hmm. Like, he would go up to him and be like, oh, like, what'd you have for if that? Probably this and that. Like, just joking around mm-hmm. would be able to do it. But then he's like, not wanting to confront him now. Mm. <laughs> and and other uncles know of it now. Like I'm getting texts from other uncles. Texts. Text? Yes. They're that's like a, that's their job then. Yeah, yeah I know. Because I'm not gonna say it. Yeah. We just we just look out. We're like, whatever the proximity is of uh You have his, to calculate like what how far it, the the burp is the able burp to like is. launch. Mm. It's zero dark thirty back there just sniping guys. And then in between Rakaz when people like leave, you have to be like, all right, let me take this spot. Yeah. Exactly. You guys should convince him to be the imam. Why? That way there's nobody to the front or to the side of him. Yeah, but if you hear that in the mic, <laughs> in the mic, like sometimes the imam like sneezes or coughs in That'll the mic. It'll be like a little ad lib. And it has these echoes. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> so if you heard the burp, it's like. <laughs> it sounds like Snorlax. That'd be a little ad lib. You know? Nah, man. I can't, you guys need like a those. forum where you guys like talk about these things, you know, because like. Our mosque, like, will address things pretty early on. Like, for example, if there's, like, the whole crying kid situation, they, like, built out different spaces. They like, send pictures on the kid. 
<laughs> they're like, and they'll say it right before. They're like, if you're going to have a crying kid, we have designated section. If you're going to have a kid with you at all, we have a designated section section for you to pray. You're more than welcome to have your kid, yada, yada. So like, because all the other ladies were like, bro, we're trying to pray Travi and like, there's a crying kid next to me for literally an hour. Like, how am I supposed to function? So you guys have to have like a little forum and then somebody address it like on the loud mic. So it's like nobody's attacked. They're like, listen, they're a brand new. Mindset. No, you have to. You, if you don't directly say to somebody, they're not going to. Yeah. They're not going to get it. Because they're not going to. One, they might not read it Two, like, mm. you know, whatever forum there is. Also, two, they're a brand new masjid. Mm. Probably ran by a lot of daisies, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Just Can't get be organized. him to not like that mosque anymore. Bro, if you're going to come to the house of God, come, come pure mm. or come with Purell. I don't think the pre is going to help y'all. He can drink it. He can drink oh. it. Oh. He said silenced. You know you know what uh, my brother and I had the other day for Iftar? Mm. What? Uh, have you guys had these little little Caesars crazy puffs? What? I don't think is I've been to a little, little like, Caesars in like ever. Little Caesars is so underrated. It, underrated. it is underrated. Mad underrated. Also, if you have T-Mobile... Like T-Mobile will be dropping mad T-Mobile Tuesday deals for Little Caesars. Oh, That's still? how we got hooked on. Still? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, but Little Caesars only exists in like little towns like Bel Air. No. Nah, Amber, stop it. It nah, literally, Little Caesars is literally uh, like owns a stadium. I oh. doubt that. They do? Yeah. It, is uh, it still I think $5 Detroit. a pizza? I think so, yeah. Mm. But we get, we get like mad like free pizzas from T-Mobile. Oh. Anyways, the Crazy Puffs, that's what... Um, like, we thought that pizza bagels and pizza rolls tasted, like, as kids. Mm. But these pizza crazy puffs, they're good. How many puffs come in a pack? It's four. Four. Right? So, uh, you guys know that food guy, right? I think we looked at him. Luke's Foods or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. the white guy. Uh, I think he made an ad on that. I literally just saw On it. the crazy puffs? Yeah, on the crazy puffs. I think he was sponsored by Little Caesars. Dude, especially if you uh, break your fast with it. Mm. Oh, so, it's, it's like a breading, right? And mm. it has, like, what, cheese and sauce in it? Yeah. But it's like, it's like a um, stromboni, but like little. It's like a mini. It's like a mini Stromb mini pizza. Mm. But it's just it's just so like oh. soft and like it's it's correct. It's, oh, you know what I mean. It yeah. just it hits. Got to try it. You're try sure there's it. no pepperoni in it. You'd probably like pork, it better. Yeah, pork sauce, little pork magnet. Yeah, pork and rum. Little Caesar's crazy puffs. <laughs> um, <laughs> Amber, you should go and be like, look, I looked at the ingredients and it was pork. Mm. You know what my brother calls them? They're called crazy puffs, right? He calls them the P Diddies. As in like Puff Daddy. <laughs> He's like, For us. He goes, he goes, he goes, yo, the P. Diddy's hitting. I was like, what? He's like, the P. Diddy's, the crazy puffs. I was like, did you just come up with that? He's like, bar. yeah. I was like, that's fire. Yeah. I was like, I want to start calling these the P. Diddy's. <laughs> <laughs> Little Caesars P. Diddy's. <laughs> I'm crying. You guys saw what's going on with Diddy? What is, that is going a on with that's Diddy? That's a crazy puff. Yeah. That is a crazy, that <laughs> is a puff. crazy puff. <laughs> Bruh, when I'm seeing... Okay, so we've been talking about this Nick doc, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we heard about um, what's going on with Diddy, all of this uh, sex trafficking going on behind the scenes. They're saying that um, he's not even, like, the guy. He's covering up for, like, the elites, and he's the fall guy for them. He's running away on his jet. We've got um, all of these different people coming out with... Um, different allegations currently. It's just making me more and more scared of mm. like rich people in general. Mm. Like the stuff that they're sacrificing to yeah. be in the positions that they're in. And then hearing that like not only it's Diddy, but it's just like, oh, Jay-Z is even worse. Have you seen this? No. Oh, yeah. I heard that Jay-Z is like in like, did you hear what they said about Jay-Z? No. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. I'm not saying allegedly anymore. I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm all these conspiracies that people were like, yeah. oh, dude, have you heard this? And I was yeah. like, nah, bro, that's not real. It's all it's real. All real. Yeah. Guilty until proven innocent. Ooh. They said about Amber, <laughs> do you know about Be uh, the thing they were saying with between Beyonce and Jay-Z? About how he got this girl pregnant? Yeah. Yeah. So allegedly he got this girl pregnant um, while he was like married to Beyonce and Beyonce was having a kid or about to have a kid or something like that. And he got this other girl pregnant. And she was found dead. What? Yeah. And so when Kanye later had said, like, like I know you have people to, like, what what did Kanye say? I know you got killers, Jay-Z. I know you got killers, Jay-Z. Don't send them after Don't me. Don't send them for, yeah. Dang. Kanye also said uh, that Diddy's a fed. 
and it ended up like it seems like yeah. he is. I, I just want to say Kanye says the craziest shit. Everyone's hating on Kanye. But, Kanye's but never he has, wrong. He has no allegations. Yeah. I mean, he has no allegations. He has no allegations as far as I know. As far as yeah. we know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no one's c- come back and said, oh, he's like this. He's like, the first to tell on himself. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what I respect now. It's like all these people that act good. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, we're billionaires. We're black billionaires. Like, no, no, but here's the thing. How quick are people to be like, oh, Kanye's saying wild stuff? We need to come together as a community, and as people, you. and stop and, supporting. And, you know, like, there's so many celebrities reaching out to Kanye. Kanye, you got to stop. You got to stop. Who's reaching out to Diddy, Jay Z, or all these other people? They'll get killed. Exactly. Yeah. They'll get killed. It's wild, bro. Yeah. And, like, they, so. That was one story with the whole Jay-Z thing. I just think it's crazy how this Sierra situation, she hopped on it at the right time. Like, she was quiet for a while. She was dating him for, like, 10 years. And everybody thought it was that she, like, left him because she never got a ring. And they're like, did he did Sierra wrong? And, like, she was... Uh, why, did, why am I saying Sierra? I meant to say Cassie. Um, and uh, She, like, uh, had the lawsuit against Diddy? Yeah. And then it got settled a day real over, quick. A day later, I think. Yeah, she had a song. Do you remember a song like "Me and You"? Now I've been waiting, think I want to. It was a. It was like. Now that is singing. That is singing. <laughs> that right there. Diddy, pick this one up right here. Making the band. Us. Take her. Making the band. Take her. <laughs> so, anyways, she was like, like iconic, you know, and they were dating, and everybody thought that they broke up because she never got a ring, and they're like, oh, like he did her so wrong, he did her so wrong. And then come to find out, she like, you know, ended up marrying this trainer, having a couple kids, doing her thing. And then boom, like comes out with this like whole lawsuit against him and stuff. Got her 30 mil as she should and kept it moving. She did it at the right time because then after that, everything else then started opening up. Um, And in that lawsuit, it was like saying how she was like sex trafficked and treated badly. And that's when the whole thing came up. With like him blowing up Kid Cudi's car mm-hmm. and uh, holding, uh, was it Wale or somebody? Uh, I think so. Uh, feet upside down off yeah. the balcony. Yeah, Wale. And those things slowly started coming up. And then Meek ne- Mill, apparently he like. Meek Mill keeps telling on himself. <laughs> Meek Mill saying the gayest stuff on what Twitter and he's say? not covering up. <laughs> well, they're just like, uh, he was really tight with Diddy. And then he has a song too, just like. It was saying something. He's like, I can't believe I did that with Diddy. And people are like, hold up. <laughs> like they're going back on the lyrics. And he's trying to clear it up and saying like, yo, I'm not gay. I didn't do nothing with Diddy. But he's like, it's it's sounding even more gay the way that he's saying the yeah. tweets. Yeah. It's I crazy. I think the only thing that Meek Mill um, is lacking there is like brain cells. Like he just doesn't, <laughs> he needs like, he cannot handle things by himself. Like he did, he's he on probation. His Twitter. He always yeah. just is not good with Twitter. My, my favorite thing that Meek Mill did was like, you know, remember when XXX Tentacion died? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He made like a tribute like at his concert. He's like, Rest in peace, extension. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, anything Meek does looks goofy. You seen his uh, picture by the pool yeah. eating fries? <laughs> you ever seen him do a somersault uh, like off the trampoline? Wait, what? <laughs> Everything is goofy that Meek does. He like what wasn't? He was like uh, on probation and he couldn't do street racing with like those like bikes, bikes yeah. and then posted on instagram mm-hmm. him riding bikes yeah, and it's like wow like what are you doing yeah. and by the way meek is like if you listen to his music it's like one of the hardest, the hardest rappers yeah. like it's so like fire to listen to but then like his personality is so the opposite it makes it's me so like him funny. more though yeah i like it more I'm it's like, so funny um yeah with diddy he's like what's crazy is he was uh recording all of the activity that happened in the house too and this is exactly the way that those conspiracies tell you that people do things. Yeah. It's a trade. You're making a deal with the devil. They uh, record you, take pictures. They have blackmail on you. And it's crazy to hear that somebody actually like was recording all of these like sexual acts and whatever else so that they have it for whatever reason yeah. later on. I, I want to say rebuttal. Like Diddy, uh, I think uh, it was like Cole Bennett or something. He met with Diddy mm-hmm. and Diddy told him like record everything. So apparently Diddy has had like a crew filming him for the past. No, no, bro. But this is like cameras in the house, in bedrooms, recording. No, no, all I, types I, of... I know, I know. But like I'm saying, if someone's so guilty and he has like a camera crew around him like all the time, oh, like for proof. I don't know for proof, but like, does that make him like as guilty as? Because I know, is? um, what's his name? Barstool Sports, um, the owner, uh, Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy, yeah, yeah, um. 
He does that. He records all of his like hookups for proof. Oh, he records his hookups. Yeah. Oh, dang. Hmm. It's weird, but he says that like I need to because then someone's gonna come out with some allegation against me, but then I have the evidence. Yeah. People come out uh, from Drake like all the time, and Drake like has like weird precautions, but yeah, hot sauce. Did you <laughs> yeah, see that? Hot sauce. Um, Diddy adopted a white girl, apparently, like a little white girl, and like put her on like um like live stream or whatever and they were like he's like yeah like did he adopted like like me and like adopted a white girl and she's like introducing herself and she's like 16 and then they were like tracing it back to like kids that were missing oh snap and there's like a really deep like dark twisted thing to all of this like it's one like it's one thing to be like moving weight when it comes to like for example how young miami is getting accused of because young miami's been dating diddy for like a year or two now city girls from the city girls um and they were trying to accuse her of like moving weight with him like 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 moving pink cocaine or something um and luckily she has like these screenshots of her like doing these things what is pink cocaine i think it's like a uh like a mixture of drugs so it's not just white it's not just like cocaine it's like a mixture of like ketamine and like all this other type of drugs In in miami it's called scruff and it's like, are you in this? Are you yeah. moving? Have you weight? moved it? No, my lash lady is crazy in Miami. So we have this lash girl in Miami, and she like. I, as hold soon on, as I hate this. What? My lash lady in Miami. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you know what you sound like right now? Too bougie. You sound like someone who eats pork and rum tiramisu cake. Oh my yeah. god! As soon as I get in that lady's lash bed, she's telling me the wildest stuff. She goes she's, to ditty parties. She's just like, oh, and then like this person snorted pink coke, uh, uh, scruff off, and I was like, what is scruff? And she was oh, like, so she's putting you on. Yeah, and she was like, it's like this pink powder. It's like I was like, like oh. I'm using it on your lashes right now. And she was like, I snorted it off his like ass crack or something like that. Just like, All right. just tell. Okay, but she did say she snorted Stop off his pro. off his other Stop thing. But I'm I'm literally unnecessary. I'm, <laughs> but she's crazy, and that's the way I know. Anyways, and Young Miami's from Miami, so it 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 would make sense. Because it's a thing in Miami. Anyways, this whole thing is dark and twisted and like new things keep coming out. And I'm like, this is not real life. Here's who I trust. I trust Kanye. I trust 50 Cent and mm. trust Vince Staples. 50 Cent has been blowing Diddy up He's for making, years. Isn't he making a documentary or was that like? I don't movie? know if that was like a troll or yeah. not, but I would love if 50 made that. Yeah. 50 is suing his own uh, ex-baby mama or whatever. Um because, or no, trying to take um, you custody of the child. Yeah. Interesting. He's trying to take custody of his child from her because he said that she was uh, being trafficked by, uh, she was, or she was like a sex worker for Diddy. Okay. Oh, dang. So he wants custody of So she's of a victim child. and he wants to take the child away no, no, from her? No, but he would, she was like voluntarily doing that. Yeah. No, so she she had posted so she was listed in the lawsuit, right? And he came out and he was like, "Oh, you're a little sex worker? You're a little sex worker. Uh-huh. Little sex worker." And then she called him out. She was like, "I'm tired of your jokes. Like enough is enough. Like you are worded me and you essayed me um throughout our relationship. Like I'm tired of staying silent." And then he took that opportunity to keep calling her a little S worker. Mm -hmm. And then um, now he was like, oh, I'm just going to. She said she moved like one mile away from him so that he could see their kid more. And he only saw her, the kid, like two times and 10 times in two years. I don't know, bro. What is she doing with Diddy? (laughs) For us, you know, these people are victims, right? I know. But why was she like with Diddy? For us, these are like you're not understanding. If you're being a sex worker for Diddy, you're being trafficked. But you're like, it's not like a little he he he. I'm just a little sex worker. Like they're being trafficked. Like that's not like a like. Yeah, but she's. Go ahead. Didn't she like go there like voluntarily? You, and- there's you fall into these like situations where once you're in these things and they blackmail you, they have a video on you. They have because it's not like a on- random person. It's like if you're going to. Diddy. It's one you thing if it's like future, right? And you're like, he has no future. Like, 
I'm saying like it's one thing if it was like another <laughs> rapper where no, the, this is future. No, like if you've heard anything that future says, you don't go near future. I'm saying like, listen, okay. if it was like another rapper, mm-hmm. right, and she was like, uh, uh, is a sex worker or whatever. First of all, like if you're a sex worker, like okay, cool. There's a bunch of OnlyFans girls out here too, like whatever. But I'm saying if you're a sex worker and you're and you're like working with a rapper, that's one thing. But you're understanding that she was a sex worker for Diddy, which likely means she was just straight up trafficked and had a lot of blackmail on her. She probably was being like undersold, all these types of things. So it's not like this was in correlation to something else. She's in combination with Diddy, who is out here like selling women. Okay, fine. I don't know her situation. Yeah. All I'm saying is that 50 has been telling us for years. And a lot of the stuff that 50, mm. 50 says about like, oh, this person, that person, it ends up being like kind of true or like, you know, mm. something comes out about them. True. No one's listening. Didn't they say that Diddy also like um, unalived someone? Like who who was that? Tupac. Is that the Tupac? rumor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's and Tupac. what's the like? I don't know the lore. Lore behind it, but. It was basically an East Coast, West Coast thing. Mm. Him and Biggie Smalls, they were together with Bad Boy Records. Mm-hmm. And then West Coast, they had like a whole thing going on uh, where there was all this beef. Mm. And then, you know, people got killed in that. And mm. allegedly one of those people set up by Diddy. It's Tupac. Yeah. Was Diddy like a really good rapper? Producer. Producer, got it. Mm-hmm. And like kind of like the in the management role, just kind of like. He was rapping, but like more so, he like found a lot of the yeah. right people and put them on his label. You also mentioned Vin- Vince Staples, who like arguably like caught R. Kelly. Because really? He, literally. How? It was at Complex Con, like 2017, 2018. Okay. And he was like making a joke, like, oh, yeah, R. Kelly be pissing on girls, and like no- nobody caught him and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And that's what literally sparked like investigations and all that stuff. And really? then the documentaries like mm-hmm. came out and. All that stuff. And Cat Williams apparently said something about Diddy too. Apparently, there there have been celebrities that have been saying stuff about Diddy, but we're, we just haven't been putting it together. People have been saying it for like twenty years, mm. like about Diddy, like oh he's crazy. I would like, never don't go to Diddy don't parties. Don't go to Diddy parties, mm. yeah, stuff like that. So, and I feel like it's the same thing with Dan Schneider. People have been saying things for like ten years. People have been mm. saying things about like Jeffrey Epstein, all these people yeah. for years. And it's what's just, crazy is like it's all tied, dude. That's what's. Like, yeah. all of it eventually comes back to, like, uh, these people who are in, like, elite power. It always ties back to Israel. It's all, like, <laughs> for some reason. I'm not even kidding. No, like, I know. It's I, just ultimate conspiracy. Like, before I used to look at this stuff and I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. that's too much. But then the more that I keep seeing and then, like, when you see, oh, this person is actually, like, uh, works for Israel and he's part of the U.S. government and this money is going. It's just like what? I can just imagine mm. your room. You, you like now have the strings <laughs> all over it. <laughs> I don't want to get to that point, bro. I wish like one person would just come out with the tell-all. Obviously, they would be put in a huge amount of danger. Uh, there, there is. There's gonna be um, a man upstairs who's gonna tell all. Mm. God is gonna be like, yo. So let me break it down for you. Yeah. yeah. The Nickelodeon logo, it's designed like Epstein's Island. <laughs> Look at this. Right it here. is. <laughs> right. Um, last thing before we take it to the Patreon is the, while we're on the conspiracy topics is, um, recently in Baltimore, uh, the key bridge Oh yeah, got hit yeah. by that cargo ship mm-hmm. from um, Singapore, from Singapore. I was going to Sri Lanka with Indians on board. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You were laughing. <laughs> <laughs> why did you, why did you start laughing when I said Indian? I was going to say crewmates. And then you just started laughing <laughs> because they're <laughs> Indian. <laughs> What's funny, Shamir? What's uh, also funny? It's I'm hilarious, bro. <laughs> okay, it was Indian crewmates uh, <laughs> with the Singapore ship. Are we anti-Indian right now? What's going no, on? No, it's Who's just saying? funny that it like it would be Indians. Indian out of all people. <laughs> it would be our people. Um, our people. I mean, like, uh, yeah, fifty years ago, we were the same. 50? Speak for yourself. <laughs> we were all a part of India. It's more than 50. Oh, okay. Like this, meme, this meme I saw, it was like all Indian crew on container ship that brought down the Baltimore Bridge. And then... <laughs> <laughs> <Bruh. laughs> like the picture is like, hello, Why? sexy. Can you open oh cloth <laughs> while he's in the ship? <laughs> oh, my God. They Why? said like... Dude, this is not funny. Yeah, y'all need People to People died. Yeah. It's the Indians, bro. Blame them. <laughs> 
Apparently, the ship was having probably, you know, Baltimore is like a really big dock. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like an important, like, import export area. And so it costs a lot of money to dock your boat there. And um, apparently, the boat was having problems at the dock. Yeah, yeah. And the dock manager and the ship manager were like, it's going to cost too much money to get it fixed here. Like, let's go elsewhere to like a different port. But the problems were already existed. They also called like the police and everything like 30 minutes before. No, 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 and not 30 minutes before. And as they were approaching the bridge, it was oh, five minutes before. Five minutes before they okay. called a mayday and they were like, we keep losing power. And then it came back on. They lost it. came, And that's the only reason why there was no cars that were like traveling through that were on the boat. It was just crew workers, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, RIP to the six missing crew. I mean, I think some of them are found, but... Six yeah. um, crew members that didn't make it. It was crazy. It was like it went worldwide. Like I had people from, you know, all around the world, like me, me, not all around the world, but like people from UK and like yeah. Pakistan. They're like, hey, are you good? And I'm like, I mean, yeah, it's like a well, personally, like I've only been on the bridge like twice or three times in my life, but mm. I've never been on that bridge that often. Yeah, yeah we've been on that bridge uh, a number of times, especially when you go to like Annapolis and uh one of our friends saw that he sent me a video. We were actually like yeah. boating by that bridge too. Yeah. It was in the back. And it's so weird to like know that that's all gone now. Yeah. I was looking on Google Maps and it was like temporarily closed. Yeah. yeah. They said it took like five years or something to make it, to build it. And it's mm. going to take two to 15 years to, to rebuild. Yeah, and I was like, whoa. Better they're, make it stronger. They're uh, trying to put in all like the federal funding to get it built. But like they were saying that Baltimore's economy, those. Um, people that like had jobs all around there like it's gonna be like million several millions of dollars every day that baltimore's gonna lose mm. um, wow. because of that port wow. specifically yeah. and they're gonna have to like go to virginia now or something but it was like a major uh area yeah and so now it's gonna be like they at least just need to clean up the bridge in order to make it like passable mm -hmm. but they couldn't do that obviously immediately yeah. because they were trying to find isn't the ship the still there first. and like the crewmates are still in the ship and they have to l wait till they lift off everything. Till like, the, really? Yeah, yeah. They're still like in the true? ship. Yeah. They got oh, like wow. trapped inside the ship. They're in the ship, and like obviously they can like leave if they like find a way or whatnot. But they have to the I guess the government or whatever have to f like clean up the um, the bridge on top of them for oh them. To, but they're good because they have enough food for you know they're set for like months really? of travel. Oh my god! Because they were gonna travel to Sri Lanka. How did anyways. they know that they were good? What do you mean? Are they communicating with them? Yeah, yeah. They're communicating. Oh. Yeah. So But there's no like air coming in? I think there's air. I think maybe. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're they're they have they're enough food alive. and water. Fine. Yeah, they have enough food and water for like, you know, months and stuff. So they were like, Oh, bridge, we're about to hit the bridge, let's go under. No, no, no. It it went over like their entrapment or whatever where they like stay. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it like crushed that mm -hmm. or anything like that. So That's wild. But That's let's say how we really feel now. How do we feel? How do we Power feel? Power loss. Frost, Accidentally enough. hitting the... No, no. Oh. Why are we doing... What do you mean enough? Are you going to say it's a conspiracy? We are in an age of cyber warfare. Oh, my God. The Obamas just showed us... <laughs> Leave the world behind. ...where this exact thing happens. Leave the world behind. ...with a huge cargo ship losing power yeah. coming on shore. Where? The, the Obamas. Movie. The Obamas did really, what? They produced a they movie. They produced a film. Where... Released it on Netflix. Where, like, somebody was controlling the, like, electricity and all that stuff, causing, like, mayhem in the country. They made a movie? The Obamas made a movie? Yeah. The Obamas made a movie. They they told us that this was going to happen, Amber. It dropped, like, six months ago. What's it called? Leave the, Leave the world, world behind. behind. And, this like, Teslas are, like, being controlled, like, automated, and they're all, like, crashing into each other. And that's, that's why crazy. they all want us. They're, they're making laws now by that electric cars are going to have to be instilled instead of gas cars by, like, this year. What does the government want? What do they want with the electric cars? Control. To be able to shut it off at any point, right? Like the movie. That's why they have engine starters, too. Mm. It's mandated by law to have automatic push or not uh, auto shut off. I think this is already... Uh, it's framed to be, like, to save from emissions, mm -hmm. but it's also maybe a control thing. I think this is already, like, uh, happening yeah. in certain countries where they... Um, if, like, you're getting chased by the police or something like that, you, they can actually, like, just turn off your car, lock the doors. They have all the controls wow. to that and everything. Um, and now this is where we're at. Wow. 
So you're, say, say what you want to say. I've been saying this for some time. I think that we need to, uh, we need to build a bunker. Oh, my God. What, what do you mean? Oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean? Oh, my God. Mark Zuckerberg has a bunker. Mm -hmm. Rick Ross has a bunker. Post Malone has a bunker. Post Malone That's has so a bunker. Funny. Elon, does Elon have a bunker? Probably. Probably. Oh, definitely. Definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely. Elon has a bunker. And all these people definitely have bunkers. We need to be doing a podcast out of a bunker at this point. Dude, our bunkers would be so bad because like it'd be like reek of Sean Masala and we have no exhaust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have no exhaust. Bro, we are not on a Singapore <laughs> ship, bro. Dude. That's not us. <laughs> That's not us. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to be in a bunker. It sounds claustrophobic. No, but the the bunker in Leave the World Behind it was yeah, a nice that was bunker. The nicest bunker. It had friends all the seasons of it. Mm, what? <laughs> yeah. And all those it, that's a big part of the movie. Yeah. It, mm. I can't tell you any more about that. Okay. But like basically the bunker, it has everything you need, right? It has mm. um, you know, water, food, electricity, uh, it has radio communication so you can hear what's happening on the outside. And then, you know, it has a bunch of movies. Okay. Maybe a gym. That one didn't have a gym, I don't think, but I think instead of investing into houses... It's underground? It's underground. Let's invest into bunkers. You should watch that movie, Amber. I'm not okay, just, I'll watch I'm not it. just saying this stuff. I, and, and I'm not just like speculating. A lot of people are like, yo, we're under cyber, cyber warfare. warfare. <laughs> because what's happening on the other side of the world? Why does everybody know about a Baltimore bridge all of a sudden? Why is that the main news? What are they distracting us from? I mean, it was a bridge that like crumbled. It's I know, but like... a sight to see. But... For world news, was it like that? No, I was shocked. I was like, yeah. honestly, I was shocked. I was like, wait, how do you guys know about this? Yeah, It's also like there's a lot of money involved, too, because it's like an export. And like, it's a really important import export. It's like one of the oldest ones in history in yeah. the U.S. But no one knows that. It's like, you know, it's it's not like but where money people knows care. that money, knows, money that, knows but news, but people. And also, it's very like, tragic that those uh, six people or however many it was that lost yeah. their lives. But compared to other parts of the world. It just doesn't seem like it would make it on the world news in that same level where, yeah. you know, like yeah. the the uh, Russian attack that happened at the, um, was it a nightclub or something? It was I a shooting. I, um, I see. I didn't hear about it. Yeah, and that's no probably idea. more tr like insanely tragic. And so what I'm saying is this. If I die, I didn't kill myself. Heard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's too much right now that it's just like, what is going on? And we can't do anything about it. That's the thing. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I hear you. I think I need to be a little bit. How about this? When you start coming across these conspiracy th theories, like send them over. Because sometimes you come on this podcast for us and you're like. Wait, wait, wait. You brought up the AI conspiracy theory. Which one? The AI one. Yeah. The Megan. Uh, I mean, not Megan. Kate. Kate. Middleton. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're a conspiracy theorist, too. Wait, oh, wait, I, I mean, would, I, would like I, to, I like to dabble in them. Yeah. But sometimes like to, without context, like, because Frost be, be coming on here and he's just like, let's, let's, we're talking about a bridge. And he's like, let's talk about what we really think. We don't think this is cyber else. warfare. But like, like, for example, the Kate Middleton AI thing, I was like, hey, there's this thing, BBL conspiracy, this conspiracy, this conspiracy. <laughs> okay, All Amber, these, Amber, yours, what do you think yours is going stems on? from a TikTok thread of like, you watch a bunch of TikTok things. I, I just do it over Twitter. That's the only difference between Okay, so then tell me, like, you need to start coming in with, you know how, like, you have this in your room with the little strings or whatever? Bring that here. Don't be coming okay, over here with the final say... conspiracy theory. How about you bring the actual plan, like the Is, actual? I would like to apologize again. Uh-huh. Because I think that the you were right about the Kate Middleton thing. Thank you. Now I'm, now I'm with that again. I think that something is really going on. Yeah. There. For sure. Yeah. That was definitely AI. So. Video. Did you see the ring disappear in the video that Kate Middleton dropped? Yes. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. I, yeah. I, I'm not even it? concerned about the ring. It's no. just like yes. the the nature in the back wasn't it. moving. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest conspiracy theory is where did all these Suhoor Fest come from? <laughs> <laughs> where did, they were not here when we needed them. And now they're here. Too much. Bro, look at this one. Literally like every. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this one right here. Columbus, Ohio. Ohio, bruh. 
time you join us in the biggest super night not that music <laughs> a lot of people are questioning whether or not this is gonna happen well i'm here to tell you that it is you saw what happened in dallas you saw what happened in cali it was absolutely insane. where's baltimore but now it's time to show Literally. everyone we're capable of in columbus ohio the super night will take place on march 30th from 11 p.m to 3 a.m at the spinach oh did this Master already happen Local yeah it already happened the event is free everyone to come and join all you do is have to sign up in our website all right um the first comment is fifth enough fest <laughs> people are so mad you know what your uncle sent me what? he sent me a meme yesterday while i was at a sahur fest he sent me a meme and it said um if going to a sahur fest counts as 27 bodies <laughs> oh my god and I said, here I am that's with 81 this Ramadan. Then. Dang. <laughs> that's wild. One of our patrons sent a uh, tweet. It was uh, Suhur Fest daughter or podcast son. Son. Yeah. <laughs> and that I was like, we're both. <laughs> we're both. Literally. In one group, we are both. <laughs> we're both. But there's there's like think pieces online about Suhur Fest and how it's like haram. Yeah. And like, the reason also- I brought that up is because I have some questions for Amber about Suhur Fest. Okay. The most recent one. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to go on the Patreon. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, let's take it to the Patreon. Um, I don't know what's going on in the world, people. Stay safe out there. Mm. Be careful of Sahur Fest. Be careful. Watch out for the Sahur Fest. Watch <laughs> out for the Crazy Puff. And watch out for... P- oh, you already said that. <laughs> <laughs> watch out for P. Diddy. Yes, but go get the Crazy Puffs. Oh. Yeah. I'm hungry now. All right, guys. Um, we'll see you at the Patreon for a ba- for a bonus Our episode for a bait. <laughs> Shut the. <Our> shit. Di- <laughs> Sorry, let me contain myself. I had a very tough therapy. Um <laughs> It's been another week, another flavor, a little less stranger. We'll talk to you next time.